It's really crazy to think about the shiny Noctowl that Ash captured in the Pokemon anime and what it meant for the entirety of Pokemon back then. That it showed that Ash can be a Pokemon master by capturing such a rare and elegant Pokemon, but also it had a lot of representation for the games as well. That this was our first introduction into shiny Pokemon, and it showed that the anime can represent things for the games, as well as the games representing things for the anime. That for the most part, your exposure to shiny Pokemon is going to be from Red Gyarados, and outside of that, this is going to be your first time really encountering how special a shiny Pokemon can be, and it's from the anime. It kind of shows that the games and the anime aren't exclusive with one another, and they can be a little savvy with each other as well. However, this isn't the first time that Ash encountered a strangely colored Pokemon. We get to go to the Pink Butterfree in the first season of Pokemon. It stole Ash's Butterfree's heart as well as my childhood, and the emotional damage goes just deeper than just my heart being broken by one of the saddest episodes in Pokemon ever. I still am so screwed up about what a shiny Butterfree actually is. Because even though it was in the first generation, there was no official shiny Pokemon. That was just a different colored Butterfree, and it was kind of cool and it stood out, but it had more significance as we got into the second generation. Well, an actual shiny Butterfree is close, but not quite. The wings are the same, but the body of the Butterfree doesn't really change too much. It's still going to be dark, and it has pink hands instead of blue hands and feet, as well as a pink body. The eye color is different as well, so it's not quite there, but does have that special coloration to it that does make it different and potentially much more rare. And that also brings us to the differences I'm going to cover in this video. There's just straight up regular, normal, shiny Pokemon that are represented in the anime, as well as other forms and alternately colored Pokemon as well. Kind of want to talk about more of the significant ones from each side so I think it'll make a pretty fun trivia video so the red Gyarados is the next one to talk about because it gets massive representation in the anime it's a part of the storyline in the anime and the games Lance even tames and captures it so that's pretty crazy to think about when the champion intervenes and then ends up with the red Gyarados now you do receive it in the second generation games but a strange thing about the red Gyarados is that it doesn't feel like a shiny Pokemon. It's a little bit of a scripted event. It's only referred to as the Red Gyarados. You don't really think of it as a special shiny form. And the connection really isn't there that every single Pokemon that you can encounter in the wild has the chance of being shiny with that different coloration. But you also can t see that there's something special about Ash's Noctowl. Not only is it a different color, but whenever it appears, it has that sparkles around it. it. Has the shininess even in the anime. Also, Red Gyarados is represented in Pokemon Generations. Pretty much the anime recreation of your storyline throughout the games and even silver obtains the red Gyarados in the Pokemon Adventures manga so not strictly on the anime but this Pokemon gets a lot of representation throughout the anime the games even the manga it's pretty crazy to see how much significance the red Gyarados has it's also in the TCG shiny Magikarp red Gyarados and there's even the shining Pokemon from the TCG now the next shiny Pokemon that I want to talk about is going to be Vincent's Magneton now the reason why this had a lot of significance for me growing up is that again, it's just kind of a surprise shiny Pokemon. You don't really expect it, but it's in the middle of the Johto Conference. This is the Johto League. This is where the best trainers are competing to be a Pokemon master, and this kid shows up with a shiny Pokemon. Now even though shiny Pokemon get a purely cosmetic representation in the games, it feels like there's something special, something different about a shiny Pokemon in the anime. It's rarity, it's higher difficulty to capture than just, you know, grinding a million eggs in Pokemon or trying to just sit there on the encounter until you eventually capture the Pokemon. There's a bit more skill involved, there's a bit more Pokemon mastery, so that's why it's kind of Im impactful. It says this trainer was skilled enough to get a hold of a shiny Pokemon. That's impressive. Which is also why we can see it with Winona. She has a shiny Swellow. This is a gym leader. Like, okay, it's understandable that gym leaders are going to be powerful trainers and everything like that, but you don't really expect one to just show up and be like, oh, by the way, I have a shiny Pokemon. Also, with it being her signature Pokemon, there's really something stunning about just a powerful trainer with a shiny Pokemon, and that is represented in gym leaders as well. After that, shiny legendaries. Yep, they're just shiny legendaries running around just the world of Pokemon. This absolutely shattered my mind. If I was not emotionally damaged enough from the Pink Butterfree and Bye Bye Butterfree, I did not know what to think when these Pokemon, they're not illusions, they're actually real. You get to see them interacting with their environment, and then we have Shiny Suicune, Shiny Entei, and Shiny Raikou. I honestly have no idea how these Pokemon came into creation, considering that when you're thinking about it on a lore standpoint, 
Ho just kind of resurrected them, and that was a one-time deal. And we already know that they're not shiny, but you can encounter them shiny. So it seems like a nice little way to drive the movie and also have an event. But when you realize that these are real creatures in the Pokemon world outside of the event, it, it kind of adds a new layer of depth as to what a shiny Pokemon could be, and even legendaries not being off limits when it comes to shiny Pokemon. So now let's go and talk about the alternate colored Pokemon and the strange forms that you could also potentially find in the Pokemon world. What if I told you that there's a special island out there filled with special berries that actually turn any of your Pokemon shiny? Well, kind of. We have the Pinkin Berries from Pinkin Island, and any Pokemon that eats them will eventually become pink. Pikachu had its tail temporarily t become pink from eating just a berry, so if your diet consists of Pinkin Berries, well, then you're a shiny pink Pokemon, kind of. It's not an official shiny, it is a natural Pokemon that ends up gaining the color, but if it's already a shiny pink form, you can kind of deceive your friends. You can even exploit it for business, because it is a very unusual Pokemon, even though it's not necessarily rare because of the plentiful pink and berries that grow on the island so it just kind of shows that yeah there's weird form colorations that can either be natural or forced and then we have the greatest tease of all time the freaking purple kecleon ruined my childhood once again like the shiny pokemon in the anime just play with my emotions they probably played with yours as well because you see these guys they're not even they're they're in an episode in the second generation so not only do we get a tease of third generation pokemon in the johto series we just get the wrong color kecleon as well holy crap a purple kecleon that has to be one of the coolest shinies ever until you actually get in the game and then you're severely disappointed when it's actually a blue band on the stomach pattern instead of a red band and what if, like, the first Kecleon you encountered was the shiny? You didn't notice the sparkles, you didn't really care, and you just KO'd it. Like, this is one of the easiest shiny Pokemon to miss, just because there's really not too much of a difference about it. It's got blue on a stunning instead of red. Everything else about it is the same, and we got to see a purple Kecleon that would have been much cooler in the anime. Also, some other forms become metallic and crystalline that's not just colors that there's a golden pseudo wudo it shines it has the glimmer of gold and then also the crystal onyx now the crystal onyx i remember a lot of shenanigans with like alolan pokemon that people thought that's an alolan onyx or anything now that just turned out to be crazy gibberish speculation but it does show that pokemon can adapt to their environment or at least they're shaped by it to the point where their coloration changes or even their entire body structure can change to represent something like a shiny Pokemon, or at least a very rare, very special Pokemon that has different colorations and different attributes. Now, other than that, I guess I'm gonna kinda go and give it away for the rest of the video. So this video is just from the list of different colored Pokemon in the anime. That this is a list that exists on Bulbapedia, so if you've ever been interested in seeing every listing of shiny Pokemon in the anime, as well as the episodes, so you can go and check it out for yourself, this is going to be the page, so I'm going to quickly skim over all the other ones, because there's actually been a surprising amount of shiny Pokemon shown in the anime. Uh, there's actually a blue Ditto, so there's a shiny Ditto that's in the uh, fourth generation. There's a random spikier Pikachu in one of the end credits. James encounters one. There's a uh, Jesse's Dustox, if you ever wondered where it went, if you missed a couple of episodes. It actually met a shiny Dustox, and then similarly to the pink Butterfree, it goes and leaves, and then they go and breed and start their own family and fun stuff like that. We see from the Zorark Master Evolutions movie, that's where the legendary beasts came from. And then the complete mind blow of like the black and white movie, you know, Victinian Sekrom versus Victinian Reshiram as the movie, where we actually have the two characters, they swap their shininess on the Pokemon. So there's a shiny Hydreigon in one, and then there's going to be a shiny Golurk in the other. There's also just a random shiny Onyx, fifth generation, not a fifth generation Pokemon. Shiny Onyx appears. Uh, the Genesect from the Genesect movie It's also a shiny Pokemon. That was actually kind of easy to spot out, but you just don't think about it. Like, you, it's like, oh, just a red Genesect here. Oh, by the way, that's a shiny Pokemon. And as you can see, then we do have Steven's Metagross, the classic shiny Beldum event, and then also just showing he's got a shiny Metagross. He's a crazy trainer. There's also shiny Halucha, shiny Rayquaza, and that's like, look at that. Just the list goes on of shiny Pokemon and then mega shinies that get representation in the movies. We have the Volcanion in the Me Mechanical Marvel movie, as well as also just Lissandre coming in with his shiny red Mega Gyarados. That's dangerous. That's that's some villain level stuff right there. Also, there's Shiny Phantom, and even the Dragonair gets some representation. Like, that's, yeah, I think the look on Brakeson's face right there really summarizes that one, except you can't really see too well. It's like, oh, man, that's, 
That's shocking when you go and throw out a shiny Dragonair. Then we have the Valencian Pokemon, otherwise known as the OG Alolan. So they have different patterns, different coloration. It's kind of shiny, kind of not really, but it's just kind of the Pokemon trains of Valencia Island. This is where the Crystal Onyx, Pink and Berry, the Orange Islands have a lot of different Pokemon coloration. It's kind of like an awkward buildup into shiny Pokemon as we transition from the first into the second generation, but it shows that the coloration doesn't necessarily mean it's automatically shiny. Ash's Lapras's mother is actually a different color. Then we have the Snowman Snorlax, the greatest tease of all time. And it might have been easy to miss in Destiny Deoxys, but there were two different colors on the uh, Deoxys, and that could represent something with a different coloration form. Meryl, Breloom, and Shroomish. Weekend Warrior had a light blue Meryl, blue Breloom, and a Shroomish with white spots. So they're just, yeah, they're just random. Look at this. Look at this right here, guys. Random just blue Breloom, and then crazy different Shroomish right there, and then there's a lighter Meryl. Like, how did the... Explain, please. That's not shiny. There's no backstory to that, but they're just there to make you wonder forever. We have the uh, Miss Magius Rayquaza illusion. So because Miss Magius is purple and doing all kinds of crazy illusion cursing shenanigans, that's going to be the Rayquaza difference right there. Uh, the Puka with blue eyes, and I remember this episode. This episode messed, messed with me as a kid, but you get different markings on the Pokemon, and then we get to see that there's more Lapras coloration changes, a Wooper with a heart. Smeargle Tails actually change color, which is pretty cool. Even though we only see the green in the actual Pokedex entry, depending on a Smeargle's mood, it can actually change its tail color at will. So that's represented throughout the anime with like red, blue, and other colors Smeargle. It's pretty cool. We have a heart on a Spinda, we have a heart on a Bulbasaur. It's actually Maze Bulbasaur, so we can see that a lot. We can see that Dwebble. While not necessarily a coloration change, it is an alternate Pokemon, but they just have different rocks. They're Hermit Crabs. It's kind of something that happens. Same with Deonsi. Being a rock formation Pokemon might get some different forms as well. And then we go into Mewtwo Strikes Back, where there's some obvious differences from the cloning defects of the Pokemon. And I think that's it. So there we go, guys. Quick rundown of all the shiny Pokemon so you know what to expect. If you're wondering what happens in the Pokemon Sun and Moon anime, maybe you'll see it blow up on Twitter. If not, come back to this list months from now. Hey, maybe there were some shiny Pokemon representing the Pokemon Sun and Moon anime, but here's kind of the secret. Like, if you see any kind of shiny anime Pokemon list on YouTube or anything trying to represent it, you can keep ahead of the game and then you can know what all of them are as well. So guys, enjoy the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.